Member Moore, you probably have to speak through me. So if you want to make a motion or do a second before John Hatler does, you'll want to make a motion on your camera and I'll try to catch it. And you know, this is how you vote. Okay. I can also shoot you a text or a chat, right? Okay. Yeah, you can get on the chat. All right. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Okay. Call the meeting in order. Thank you all for joining us tonight for Wheaton County uh, Board of Education meeting. If y'all stand and do the pledge for us, me, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We call a meeting basically to address the budget. We have some other business to attend to. Uh, we typically do not meet in July after this. Um, Call meeting, but we may uh, need to meet before we resume school in August. So we'll, we'll probably save uh, an opportunity for uh, just know that we may be meeting again in a few weeks. Um, we have uh, the agenda that was distributed prior to the uh, meeting. Uh, there's nothing to add. Is there a is there a motion to approve the agenda? So I say. Moved and seconded. Any questions about the agenda as prepared, presented? All in favor of approval of agenda say aye. Aye. Uh, All opposed? The agenda is approved. First item of business is the various and sundry budget resolutions and transfers. This is all basically tidying up the fiscal year. Mr. Frazier, you want to walk us through these? I will. Um, 2020 is the first one I have. Yes. First resolution is coordinated school health, and it's uh, moving $5,000. Um, that program tries to rotate and donate monies to each school each year, or not each school, but to a school each year to help with some kind of project that they have. This 5000 is going toward playground equipment at Greenfield uh, this year. I think you remember last year we did some work at the walking track at Sharon and uh, prior year that we did some playground work in, in Dresden. So uh, it's all coordinated school health monies, grant monies, no local dollars. Is there a motion to consider this resolution? So, so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions about the resolution? Mr. Frazier explains. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Aye. Resolution 2020-48 is approved. 2020-52, is that the next? This is our big one, end of year cleanup with our general purpose budget. Um, just to uh, highlight a few things, uh, most particularly salaries, you can see that very top one, teacher salaries, we uh, were over $18,000, uh, almost $19,000 in that category, which we moved money to balance that. It's not unusual in any of our salary lines to have a different number than we project because sometimes we don't have persons hired when the budget's passed. So we can hire a teacher that has more years of experience, different degrees that can impact that. And also we average each year around 10 teachers that advance degrees in midstream that we, we honor that and, and increase their salary based on that education degree. Um, if you look down to follow me with the number 72120. Um, that is age medical personnel. This line. You can see we're over there, which that's not unusual. Uh, the reason, moreover, we pay for substitutes when those uh, nurses are off, and then for any field trips or events that we had prior to March 16th, because sometimes we have students that we have to send nurses with, that's the cost of that. And that every year, it's hard to project that accurately, and, and we most go over that line almost every year. So I want to point that out to you all. Um, if you'll turn with me to the second page, 
The second page at about uh, halfway down, you'll see 72710. That is where uh, the line is 729 transportation equipment. You can see we budgeted $1 and we uh, spent 358602 We purchased the four propane buses that was part of that grant money. Uh, that's a 50-50 grant. We'll receive a check for $178,000 early in July. And so basically we we pay for half and they pay for half in that grant. So but we had to balance that budget. When those dollars were received, we put those back into our, our fund balance. A couple of good signs in the budget this year, places we were able to balance and move that amount of money around. Um, our natural gas bill was down quite a bit this year. So we had $100,000 that we moved toward buses. And also our bus fuel was down. Uh, we, we didn't run any buses after March 16th, prices were down. So we only expended about half of what we budgeted there. So that allowed us to, to pay for those buses, not get in the fund balance. Other than that, it's pretty much just clean up. Uh, mainly what you see, if it's, if it's related to salary, we have to put it on resolution. Uh, if it's not related to salary and there's enough money within that account, we don't have to put it on resolution. Just balance up the function. Thank you, Mr. Frazier. Is there a motion to approve resolution 2020-52? Move to approve. Second. Is there a second? Second. Move to second. Any questions about the resolution, Mr. Frazier? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all in favor? Aye. The budget resolution is passed. Resolution number 2020-53. Let me get this in proper perspective now. May I have a motion to put it on the floor for consideration? Second. There's a second. Moving second. All right, Mr. Frazier, you want to walk us through this resolution? Yes. Get the proper This is the order. resolution for nutrition budget, and there are a few small salary items that needed to be adjusted, uh, very minor, but the major things is revenue. We got our USDA commodities revenue, $44,000, and also our USDA meal reimbursements for the last quarter which was 409,000 and we budgeted those. It's just a wash with the food you purchase. It's for our food supplies and also our commodity foods that we purchase. It's the revenues for those food items we kept here. Okay, any other questions or comments about the resolution? All in favor of approval, say aye. aye. Uh, all opposed? Resolution 2020. <coughs> And I believe that's all the resolution. Next item will be the budget. Uh, is there a motion to put the budget on the floor for, for consideration? So move. Uh, it's been moved Josh by Moore. Josh Moore. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Allen. Uh, okay. okay, Mr. Frazier, where are you I, start? I would like to, <laughs> because these should be very, very quick. I would like to start 142, which is a federal budget. There are no local dollars involved with that. Uh, basically tell you there, there are minor changes in the federal budget. Um, all, any certified position, salary increase is based on the step raises from our salary schedule. So you'll see some minor increases in the salaries in this federal budget. And then there's some fluctuations for services for uh, particular students, whether it be equipment or services that we have. There, there are absolutely no uh, local dollars involved with that. It's to help fund some teaching positions, uh, also in our title program. Each school gets some funding for extra positions. It's not paid for with local money. Okay, any questions, additional questions about any of the federal funds uh, budget? All in favor of approval, say aye. All right. Fund number 142, federal projects is approved. All right. The third one is uh, that our, the next one I'll look at is 143. That's our food nutrition budget. Is there a motion to put the nutrition budget on the floor for consideration? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved second. Okay, Mr. Frazier. Yeah. Um, not a lot of changes in this budget other than. Uh, 
it's kind of hard for us to pro project because we didn't have a full year of feeding and paying customers. And so uh, we're, we're going in showing our food service budget potentially being in the red because we had to project in the revenue that we actually took in last year. And in saying that, if we're back to normal school, as we hope and anticipate to be, those revenues will go up and there won't be a deficit. If we see revenues are not going up, we'll be reducing our workforce to make sure we don't go over, which we don't think that will happen. Other than that, the budget's based on um, the cost that we get as far as our food projections from our bids. We're in a consortium with that. So as you can see, we're still in good shape. Even if we have a deficit, we'll, we'll be able to have a million dollars in fund balance at the end of the year, and hopefully back around that $750 range. That account has come a long way. I mentioned this several times. Early in my tenure, we would be in the red every year. We haven't done that for several years. Um, Any big purchases? Not a few minor equipment purchases, like an oven here and there, but not anything major. Thank you, Mr. Frazier. All in favor of approving the nutrition uh, budget, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Fund 143, child nutrition is approved. And, I, and I'll say on just a last thing on the food nutrition, they, they're pretty much self-supporting between reimbursements from USDA and government and our paying customers is their budget. I think the tax base is like less than $20,000 of, of tax money that we get for that program. It's all self-supporting. So last budget is 141. 141. Is there a motion to put this on the table for consideration? So move. Second. Second. Okay. Move the second. Treasurer, third. Please. I will. Okay. Here, this is our big budget. Um, I, I'll just give you a, a general summation, and then we'll walk through page by page. One of the things that, when when I finish the budget, this document that you see comes from our finance department. One thing I, I noticed today that we'll make sure we correct next year is make sure they include page numbers at the bottom. It's kind of hard to follow, so I'm going to kind of walk you through each page. And There'll be some pages that will be no comments, but then others I will call your attention. I'm giving you a revenue summary at the, uh, at the beginning here of what we're projecting this year. We're projecting a reduction in local property tax of 26,000. We projected a reduction in sales tax of 126,000. So we're, we're down in local funding of 150, over $150,000 for this year. If you move to the middle of the page, BEP reduction, um, we're anticipating that the final stage of the BEP will be passed in Nashville this week, which basically says no increases, no raises. And um, based on that, we're going to be doing $180,000 from last year. So before ever starting, less $330,000 in revenue than we were last year in last year's budget. Um, other items are repetitive. I'd just like to show you what some of our revenues are for early childhood, driver's education. Uh, our adult ed, ABE grant, those kinds of things are, are grant dollars and have their own specific accounts. Any, any question on the revenues that we have? And, um, and we hope that they don't become reduced more than that. But we, at this point, we're pretty comfortable with that projection. Do we ever do, we ever do a uh, comparison of what we farm expenses versus the we we do in the farm. The farm has I mean, done. It's an educational program. I mean, these make up my edge. Curious to see how that. Uh, some years it does well. That's depending on the price of corn and feed. Um, you know, this year we we had quite a few more sales because we produced a lot more hogs than we used in our cafeterias, and we do have private uh, citizens who purchase animals from us for their own uh, homes. And so uh, this year we were. We were in the good. Well, there are some years that we're not in that. No, I was curious if we ever made that. Okay. I'll say what, as you'll see, as the county commission tries to juggle funding our county this year, 
Uh, this is my 11th year, and I've been saying this now every year. And unfortunately, it's come to fruition. When in the past few years, we've, we've been in good situation because our sales tax has been good. Every year, we've seen an increase. The economy's been good. And so we've kind of outweighed our funding with sales tax compared to property tax. And property tax is consistent. And now that we've taken an economic hit, now we're all free from the, uh, not the benefits, but we're, we're feeling the brunt of that. Even locally, I think some of our communities are feeling the same thing and statewide. So um, $500 million cut in the state budget this year, and they're projected a $1 billion cut. So we're looking at potentially bigger cuts from the state next year. So that's not, not good news and revenue. So it is what it is. We hope we recover sooner than that and we fall. The next summary page I have is expenditures. Um, I'll give you a, a general update that we have on that. As I mentioned, the only in salary increases that you see in this budget is for our certified staff, our teaching staff, administrators, and that's based on our step increase. Uh, that varies according to degree. I will say every teacher got at a minimum of a $500 step increase this year, um, which comes out, I think the lowest was about one, to, it's like a 1.2% raise, a step increase. Some areas might be a little more than that, so you'll see that throughout. And then I've given you an update on our staffing. Um, Dresden Elementary is gaining a teacher, Dresden Middle is down one, Dresden High the same, Gleason losing a teacher, Greenfield is up one, Martin Primary is losing two teachers, Martin Elementary is the same, Martin Middle is gaining a teacher, Westview and Sharon are both the same. I also made a notation there are no salary increases for non-certified staff anywhere in the budget at this point. Um, I would like to say up front our hopes are, and I've, I've spoken to um, the chairman about this and also spoke to the chairman of finance, ways and means, I would hope that we would look at in the fall of having some type of bonus for our non-certified staff, even if we have to look at uh, going into fund balance. And I think there's been some conversation maybe even at the county level if, if revenues um, improve. We have enough fund balance money. I think it would only be right for us to address that in the fall and move forward with that. We also have cut three educational assistants from our budget this year. Uh, those assistants are based on enrollment. Uh, one of the schools had decided to, to use an extra special ed teacher in, in lieu of two of their EAs, so the overall, Three of those positions were cut from the budget. Mr. Frazier, I'd like to go ahead and, and, and lend support to the idea of doing something for our non certified staff. They're very important roles in our schools, and I think we definitely need to be reviewing something mid year uh, revenues. And, and just to give you an idea, it's not totally accurate, but I've already done some work looking at all of our full time and part time staff. For every hundred dollars of bonus we would give, you're looking at uh, total salary and benefits were about eighteen thousand. So if you did a five hundred dollar bonus, you're looking at ninety thousand. If you do two hundred fifty dollars, you're looking at forty five thousand. Um, and we did that several years ago. I think back in November of twenty thirteen, we did a five hundred ninety eight dollar bonus for every employee who didn't do raises that year. So I would hope we would entertain that in fall and make that happen. Medical insurance has increased 2% throughout the budget. Uh, we reduced special ed position, or I'm sorry, we added one special ed position uh, after we reduced those two EAs. I'd like to give you an update on some differences you'll see in the budget. Liability insurance, we had an overall reduction of $136,000 in the budget. The reason being for that, last year was the year that we paid for our environmental insurance. It's a three-year plan. It's $144,000. It won't be due again to 2022-23 school year. So that's why that's down. The other parts of that liability went up somewhere in the 2 to 3% range, things like crime, in the marine, uh, teacher general liability, those things went up a little bit. You still see no change on the UTM football contract. We've had some discussion about our cleaning contract. It's the same as it was last year. Um, we've had discussion about 
revisiting that and opening that up in the future. We'll move forward uh, with that. Our company that we're currently, currently with is going through a process of the sale, a uh, new ownership coming on, and so we'll, I'll give you an update to that on the future of the week. We get good cleaning in some of our buildings, and some of the buildings need to improve, and I've addressed that with our, our company in the last uh, six weeks. Last one, uh, one of the biggest increases was building contents insurance. That went up 29%. That's a national situation. Um, our provider, our broker, bid that out separately away from our umbrella project, and we didn't get a bid within $200,000 of what we're paying to almost everyone was done. That went up 29%. Uh, I don't know any anywhere around that. I'm not an insurance expert, but they seem to some will go up one year and then stay low, and other ones will go up. But that was a pretty big increase. Our debt service that we pay this year is unchanged. We have three current uh, bills that we're paying on. We have the um, energy loan for the Martin Middle School addressed in the HVAC project. That's 181,000 a year. We have one more year and three months after this year. So we're getting close to having that one paid off. And then we have the lighting um, loan that we had and the million dollar adult learning center loan that we still have several years left on that. But um, in 15 months, that will be reduced by 181,000. And then just an FYI, I would like to bring that up, that last expenditure we have um, when the county commission approved the TIF grant for the Dong A industry in Martin, we get to pay $20,000 a year that I pay for that. comes out of our school budget, so um, I'd just like to you all be reminded of that. If you'll turn the page with me, uh, I'm, I'm on the revenue page. I'm not going to speak much to that. We've already talked about the revenue. Um, the projections are down. Um, Will tax remains stagnant. Uh, <clears throat> some of our neighboring counties brings in a lot more will tax for their school funds than we do. But that's pretty much been consistent. What's the what's the reason that you're getting from our funding bodies to our schools? I'm, I'm not sure why we don't increase the rate, and I'm not. I pay mine, but I'm not sure. Some like it's sixty dollars or. Forty dollars a year. I'm not sure. Why well, we, well, we don't raise the real tax rate now in Henry County, because I talked to someone there, Henry County school system gets seven hundred fifty thousand dollars off real tax. So we get one point five. They they do their real tax rate according to the value. So it's kind of prorated. So that might be now, I know in Henry County started the real tax with the express purpose of funding. Seems like that's good. Now, part of our will tax goes to the highway department. Actually, Henry County is 100% goes to school, and then it goes to the county. So, but that the county commission would be the ones who would have to approve to increase that. I'm going to move to the first page of expenditures. You should see uh, at the very top it says function is instruction, department record instruction, and the account number is 71100. That's the first page of our expenditure budget. That is the largest part of our budget, 16 million, almost 16 and a half million dollars budgeted there. You can see the teacher salaries have increased um, because of the step raises. We also pay for coaching supplements out there, administrative assistant principal supplements. We pay for summer school. We pay for a tutoring program, homebound instruction not just general teachers, all of that is paid out of that particular line item. Other than that, that increase, there's not many changes throughout our budget other than some um, minimal salary increase because of step raises. <coughs> so that's in the 71, uh, 100. And as, as I said, we're overall minus one teacher. Uh, we were at 326, Staff members this year, certified staff members. And I will, I failed to get this to John. I'll try to have those numbers updated 
So the board gets the county commission 326. I'll have this updated for the county commission where they know actually how I many teachers, administrators, supervisors, and all, they always like to know those, yeah. those numbers. Um, the second one is special education on the next page 71 200. I have really nothing to discuss on that page. If there's something you all want to ask me about, feel free. But uh, there's nothing that it really I feel like we need to talk about on that one. Um, the next page on the left hand side is IGFD 71 200, that's special ed gifted program. Really no comments on that. Um, the page on the right is record vocational. We have our supervisors and our 16 teachers across the county that we pay out of that, including our travel. Not any changes to that budget, um, other than a slight in increase in insurance and teacher salaries. The other benefits stay pretty much stay right there. If you turn page with me, you'll see the farm account. It says 71300 FRM. Um, that's our budget. Fifty-eight thousand. Uh, we say this year we spent about forty of that, and I know we took in almost forty in sales of livestock. So we had we had a good year there. Mr. Kent does an excellent job with the program. On the right hand page is our student body education. That's drivers ed. That's uh, that's two parts of that really. Seventy-one four hundred is drivers ed, and it's also our paid by schools. Schools will pay for, if they take field trips and hire substitute teachers, they send the money for that. Some of your communities pay for extra coaching supplements, goes into that, extra bus driver fees. That's a, a revenue uh, expenditure wash there. We don't spend more than the school send us on that account. If you turn page, that's more detail than the drivers at 7400. <clears throat> Um, everyone follow with me or if I got you confused you know, you On the right hand side, 71600 is our adult ed grant. We're, we're in charge of that program. No local monies. We run that uh, through our books. Mark has a, a person hired under him that oversees that with Sir Southern Kims. And that program is going very well. No, no local money. If you turn the page to me, the next account is attendance. That's where uh, Mark is our attendance director, along with being the director of the building over there. We moved his salary into the attendance line, and as uh, Mr. Platt retired, we moved Mark, Mark's salary from technology to attendance. On the right hand page is our health services. That's where we pay our nurses out of that particular <coughs> line item. And you can see we have a nurse in every school. We, we were able to give them a pretty good increase last year, but at this point, there are no uh, increases for nursing salaries in that thing. That get us competitive with local districts. Uh, yes and no. We're better than some, and there are a few districts that don't have as many nurses that pay them where the teacher salary is. We, we pay by the hour, and we pay on a, not a really a 12, 200 day contract, or a little less than that. So we're probably in mid range. I would say now, if we compare to everyone around us, we have one in How many do we have? We have one in every school. So we've got, we've got 10 nurses that are on the staff. Nine of them were paid out of this fund, and one of them is paid out of the federal uh, special ed fund. Uh, turn the page with me. The next one is 72 120 coordinated school health. That's totally 100% grant money. Uh, Bethany Allen's in charge of that program. On the next page, the right hand side is 72130 student support. We pay for uh, Lorna Benson, is the supervisor paid out of that. She's our safe schools coordinator. That's the top salary you see. We also pay for our guidance counselors for all 10 of our schools. We have 11 and a half counselors. And we have uh, also social worker that we pay out of that, that line there. It comes as one of our special ed social workers. The next page is 72130. That's your safe schools grant monies. Uh, we have to match a portion of that. We receive $97,000 from the state for safe schools. 
and the rest of that 114 is local matching monies. Uh, we use that for our training, our substitute teaching, our purchasing of materials, um, our safety, online safety program, a lot of different things, capital projects like cameras, security systems we have that came up. The majority of that is also grant money. On the right hand page, 72210 is regular instruction. Uh, we pay for three groups of uh, employees out of that. The first part are supervisors in my office, three of my supervisors are paid out of, out of that line, Mr. Kelly, Ms. Stevens, and Mr. Hyde. And then all of our librarians, our, our nine and a half librarians, come out of that fund. And then we have one social worker who works for the district we pay out of that. So as you can see, most of these are, are salary lines. If you turn the page with me, that's just a continuation of that last budget. Just one line there, we could get it all on the page. Right hand side, 72215 is our alternative school program. We have two teachers over there. We pay for one and a half, and special ed pays for a half a position. But we do have to have a special ed teacher over there if we have students that we serve that need those special ed services. The one thing I'll call your attention to is on that page 310 contract with other, other agencies. You can see we have $50,000 budgeted. We pay $35,000 a year for Carroll Academy. And we have up to 16 seats at Carroll Academy. And the other monies is a guess. If a child gets admitted by a physician into an inpatient facility, we have to pay, I think it's $36 a day, is that right Patricia? And so you can see, 58,000, we had uh, $23,780 worth of payments for those facilities this year. Um, our representatives decided that even though we still have to have the same number of teachers that our students go into the facility, we need to pay them for that. Who's a supervisor? That it's, technically it's Miss Kendall, she's our most seasoned teacher. Mark oversees that program. We just say, quote, supervisor. We have to technically have someone designated for that. Half of her salary is paid out of special ed because she's certified. On the next page is an, uh, another special ed budget at 72220. We pay for our supervisor, our uh, school psychologist, and also our school testing, special ed testing personnel and secretary is paid out of that line. Um, supervisor is Ms. Perkins. Our psychologist is Ms. Childress, assessment personnel is Ms. Travis, and then uh, Ms. Nesbitt is the secretary of the program. Down on that page also, 399 other contract and services, $50,000. That's a catch all. Sometimes that's contract for parents to transport their children to the school for the deaf. Sometimes that's contracted services if we need extra PT or OT, but we don't have those, those persons on our staff. And so special ed has to account for all those dollars to the state. The right hand page is also the, just a follow up continuation of that special ed budget. You turn the page, I won't speak to that one on the left, it's just another part. They have to pay a portion for their gifted program to meet their requirements. On the right hand side is our another vocational budget, and this is where we pay the secretary and also for some supplies and also a student and club travel comes out of that account. $35,000 is budgeted for three fifty-five. dollars We didn't spend that this year because we canceled a lot of events in the year. So we had some monies left over in our travel. The next page, Education Edge, we're doing away with that budget. That was required at one time. We were depending on a few local donations that have almost withered away. Uh, has to fall under the chamber umbrella and it's become an issue to get that managed and so we're um, doing away with that budget. On the right hand side is our technology. Um, you can see our computer programmers. We no longer have a supervisor paid out of that. Even though Mark oversees the program part of that uh, technology department, we have a technician who also supervises Mr. Jones is over the day-to-day uh, the -day work there. You see an increase 
Last year we budgeted 153,000. This year's 168. Up until this year, we had four and a half tax. We had five four and a half. We were able to transition into another uh, person who's part time is now full time with us. What did you say, Mr. Jones? What, what my he paid? He's paid out a computer program. His salary's a little higher than the other guys, so there's five tax plus money out of that money. Um, and he's just really a kind of an assistant supervisor. Good job. He does good. Our, our tech guys have done an awesome job, particularly during this closure from Mark all the way down. We've been able to do things that, um, on the fly that we've never done before. You turn the page with me. Um, 72290 was an old program, it's no longer in existence, and we have to keep it for a year to zero that out. On the right hand side is, is this board's budget uh, has you all's uh, extreme payments for being on the board, which is minimal. I'd encourage you all to look at increasing that. Um, we try it once. We'll bring that up again. And try it once. We got to sit down by pressure. Remember. What you say? Also, out of that that line, if you move down contract and services, we pay for our, our school audit. Our memberships into TSBA comes out of that. Our legal services for our board attorney comes out of that line. And then at the very bottom, you see some of our insurance student accident. No increase in that. And I already shared with you the liability decrease this year. A workers' comp was the same, so it, it was um, the same as it was last year. So that's our school board budget. If you turn page with me, the next line is director of schools. This is where my, my salary, also uh, Trisha's salary and two of our secretaries, uh, Ms. Frazier and Ms. Um, Cabot comes out of that line. My salary is the only certified salary that does not have an increase in the budget. It's the same as it was last year. Uh, the rest you see are benefits and supplies, uh, normal things that we have in that way. So uh, on the right hand page is the principal budget 72410. This is where we pay our 10 principals and also our 15 school secretaries, which includes bookkeepers. Uh, there's an increase in, in the principal salaries for two reasons, step increases. We hired two new principals last year, had a little bit different degrees, and one of our principals also advanced an EDS this year, so we had a slight increase in that amount of money. If you turn page with me, uh, 72510 Physical Services, that's just our accounting software. We use district-wide. On the right hand page is 72610 Operational Plant. Uh, that's where we pay for our lawnmower, mowing staff, and also our uh, one custodian that we have at the alternative school takes care of that mowing, comes out of that particular fund. We also have, if you move down to supplies and materials, this is where our utilities come from electricity, natural gas, water, sewer. Waste disposal all comes out of that budget. We've budgeted the same amount of monies. We were uh, within budget of all of those accounts this year. We hope and anticipate we'll do the same next year. Also on that page is the contents insurance increase, 502. Next page is maintenance of plants, 72620. That's our, our staff, our maintenance supervisor, our seven maintenance employees are paid out of that account. One of our maintenance guys is paid out of cafeteria, and that includes secretary, uh, and also some of their construction materials, contracted services lines, things like that. We sometimes have to use it's outside of our scope of work. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds, yes. Does an excellent job. Our maintenance staff is great. Yeah, and that's just a continuation on the right hand side. Uh, some maintenance equipment we budgeted there. If you turn the page, transportation contains uh, Mr. Byington, our supervisor, also does an excellent job. His salary, our three mechanics, and also our uh, 
that number is wrong, should be 34 bus drivers. Their salaries are included with no increases. Um, also, our general tires, vehicle parts. Um, they do a great job. They've rebuilt several engines this year. Vehicle parts, expenditures have gone up. Their contractor services, high taking the dealerships have gone down. Um, so they have got a great group there. On the right hand side of the page also is that budget to see vehicle insurance. There was a slight decrease. I bartered, hoping we could get a bigger reduction because we were off the road 40 days. But we've had some claims in the last five or six years that uh, we're moving in the right direction, but we still need to get those claims overall down. New insurance, people understand that, that part of it. The turn page B before and after school program. Um, that's budgeted totally on the amount of revenue we take from our paying customers. <clears throat> Dresden Elementary, Mark Primary, Mark Elementary are the schools uh, that currently have before and after school. There have been some conversations about Greenville starting one. Um, they're planning on postponing that a year. We'll maybe have a conversation next year with that. But that operates in the black. That's a, that's a good program. If you look on the right hand side, you see 74, 7,400 ECG1, turn the page, you see ECG2 and 3. If you turn the page, you'll see ECG4 and 5. And if you turn the page, you'll see ECG6 and ECGSW. We have six early childhood classrooms, 100% grant money, uh, one is Dresden Elementary, two and three are the two Martin classes. Four is uh, Gleason, five is Greenfield, and six is Sharon. And we also have a social worker that serves the entire county, works with those teachers, children, and their parents. That's 100% grant money. If you turn the page with me, we're, we're getting close to you. <laughs> Regular capital outlay. I've left that budget the same. We put a freeze on all the projects that we had upcoming uh, in the summer just because we didn't know what our budget looked like. Uh, felt like that was smart. We have some projects that we really need to address. We've got uh, HVAC project at Westview Field House that has got to be done. We've got a bleacher project at Martin Middle that's been put off since we didn't get funded in our building project four years ago. And we've got a, build, a bleacher project at Greenville Elementary where they have all their programs and uh, contests. When we get those three items knocked out, we'll have everything taken care of that should have been taken care of during our last building project. Hopefully next year we can do that. I will say it's not in this budget. You all don't have to approve it. There's a separate budget that's 177, it's cap, school capital outlay projects. That's where all of our monies for our building projects flow through. When we went through the last building project, if you all remember, we took out a loan for uh, the lighting and also the ALC. We paid out of fund balance the lighting project up front because we could save $100,000. When we got that reimbursement, Instead of putting fund balance, I put that money in 177 because we had $900,000 we need to spend that project. But we've got $165,000 left in that budget. I'm planning on using that money this year to complete these other projects we need to do. I think we'll be in good enough shape. So I'm just giving you all a heads up. It's not anything we have to have approved on the budget. We'll move forward with that and try to get those things knocked out. Um, and next year do that. The bleachers are an issue because once you bid and order those, it's almost a six to eight month turnaround for them to get developed, get them removed, they have to shut your gym down. Mark Miller will have to be shut down for up to four weeks to do that, so it has to take place in the summer. Same page, the right hand side, you see our debt service money is what we pay and also our TIF grant. Um, that's a total of $445,000. And if you flip with me to the next page, this is our, our summary. And the summary is, has the total estimated revenues, the expenditures. We are projecting 
if we spend everything that we budgeted and we've received the revenues we budgeted, we will be $361,000 in the red at the end of the next school year. Um, which we would have to go into fund balance uh, and remove those dollars. Hopefully revenues will improve. Uh, we hopefully will have some money left over in the fund, so won't be that bad. I'll, the last thing I'll say about the budget, when we shut down for coronavirus, we got a projection from Mike Daly, who is the state fiscal consultant from counties. He's shared with different departments projections of what you could look at losing and having spent out of fund balance. And he projected this year we would spend over $300,000 on fund balance. And he was pretty much spot on. In a worst case scenario, if this continues year two, in year three, we could be looking at being up to $800,000 next year out of fund balance the following year over a million. So we'll hope for the best, but I'll just say I think that we've, we've stayed within the realm of what was projected for us to do. And hopefully we'll, we won't be in the red. I, we've never passed the budget. Um, finance director says it's not uncommon for other departments to have budgets to have more expenditures and revenue. We've never done that. This is the first time, hopefully. So I'm about to talk down on budget. I'm not sure any questions at all. You all got them. Thank you, Mr. Prager. I think, given everything we've gone through, this is a pretty, I feel pretty good with tapping the curve for that little. I'm very surprised. We've I, You've all done a great job. This will be a conversation for a different meeting that we'll have a proposal on the plan that we are going to present to the county commission about where we stand funding wise, where we stand teacher salary wise, we're at the bottom of the barrel in our area. And I know this is not the time to be thinking about increasing taxes and those things, but for the long term health of our county and our school system, we're going to have to address those issues. Really hope that we get to do that this year. Yeah, I was too. We had all plans until we got well, the city of Oregon had a problem. I think they, they passed 45 yes. cents, I believe. Yes. So, and that, I won't remember. We're about 18 that. years on that, I think, that Herb said it raised it. So, maybe. Well, that, and I will address that, but there is mm -hmm. an in depth presentation in PowerPoint that we're working on building at some point. Don't know when we put it for the budget. So, that's all I have on the budget. Okay, uh, you notice that there was not an increased salary increase for the director of schools in there. Uh, his salary is uh, based upon the uh, provisions of his contract. And given a, a, a positive evaluation, there are three, three scenarios for a, a salary increase for the director of school. One being the, uh, the average of the teaching certification salaries, which is what, 1.2 or 1.3? It's, it's the teaching raise. Yeah, teaching raise. The next one would be the cost of living, the cost of living increase based upon the current C, uh, CPI, which is 1.8, or the county officials uh, across the board increase, I think it's statewide, uh, which is 3.4% increase. So those are the three triggers that we have uh, in, in the director's contract that we need to consider for uh, salary increase for the director for next year. It is, if I can remember, it's written in there that it's the largest of the three. And I'm shocked that the state did not take out the 3.4 for elected officials that was left in there. Uh, do you all have an idea what you want to do? Well, he told me he does not want the 3.4% increase given the current economic uh, climate and the fact of what we've done with our certified and what we're doing with our non-certified. Matter of fact, you think, I think he said he refused to refuse that, but I don't think he says no to anything we make him. I said if you give it to me, I'm going to turn it around to check. Okay. You're right. You said that. 
<laughs> well, I, I just want to say I do appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, one of my mentors a long time ago told me don't spend no food. So, I think the wise way is to say you don't need to raise at this very time. So, I do appreciate that sentiment uh, wholeheartedly because it's a your shoes. And I, I've said this to a lot of people. Frazier, the top 10 superintendent in the state of Tennessee, he's a hands down. And uh, there's probably nobody that deserves a raise more than you do handling the things that you've had to handle. But I, I do appreciate you putting the board in the situation to have to give you a raise knowing that that's probably not the most prudent thing to do. So I don't think I speak for all of us, but I do, I do speak. For well, and, and when the board Years ago, put that clause in there. There were times when our other elected officials in the county got substantial raises, and the board wasn't able to do that. But the director and the salary got mine, uh, and those those raises will be in other budgets throughout the county. But I just don't feel this is a team effort. We've got other people that are not even getting raises. I don't feel comfortable at all with even considering that that amount. And so. I'm comfortable with no raise. I'm comfortable if you want to do a teacher raise or do the other. It makes no difference at all. Maybe that's not the big thing. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to make a recommendation. We did 1.8 cost of uh, consumer price index increase. I'm going to put that in the form of a motion. Is there. that the better of the two? Yeah. Okay. I would second that. Move and move and second. Any discussion about that recommendation? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all. And your, uh, and your projections. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you ready? The light's sword. You ready for me to go in or do you all have anything else before I go in a couple minutes we can talk about? We're going to pass the budget first. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no. Thank you. Right. My Move salary's in. The <laughs> moved and seconded of uh, the approved budget. All in favor of approving the budget, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. 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 Oh, who you got on there now? Bo. Uh, oh, Bo. Okay. And Martin. Martin, okay. All right, great. Thank you all. Okay, it is approved. Uh, Ms. Frazier, you have a report yes. for us? Two things, I'll try to be as brief as we can, but very important. First of all, an update. We met yesterday, we had developed a task force for reopening of school. Um, and I want to update you on the committees that we have. We have a health and safety committee, we have a special populations committee, transportation committee, food and nutrition committee, an academics committee, which will develop a continuous learning plan and how we retain any learning loss from our closure. And then the last group is an operational plan of when we return to school, what does the school day look like as far as entering and exiting the building before and after school, um, changing classes, arranging classes. And we're, we're looking in, in these force groups at all different scenarios. One, if we have to completely shut down, if we have some students returning, uh, some staying at home that won't return, and then also being back to normal. So we're looking at all the different phases. We have sent out a survey to our parents asking them, do they intend for their child to return to school? If we open in the fall, just to give us an idea of what we need to prepare for learning wise. And so we'll move forward with that. We're including staff persons. We would love to have board members involved on each committee. We welcome that. We're also uh, looking for parents and community members. Sometimes we'll, we'll have a person that fits multiple roles. We want input from various folks to help us safely and correctly get our school year started off the way we all, we all want it to be. So uh, stay tuned. You all may have been contacted by our force leaders and asked you to serve. If not, if you're willing to do that, you can let myself or Patricia know and we'll sign you up. The last thing I'll say is the, I guess, the point of bad news um, I received a call yesterday. We've been dealing with this uh, most of the day today. Uh, we were notified last night that we had 
a guest at our graduation service at Dresden High School Friday night who tested positive for coronavirus yesterday, was at the ceremony. Uh, I've spoken with the family, I've spoken with the health department. Um, this person was not, did not feel any symptoms. On Friday, became ill over the weekend and well, went and got tested and did get positive results. I spoke with Miss, uh, with our director at the health department today who's been very great to work with, very upbeat about the entire situation uh, and got some guidance from her. Recommendation was for us to notify our persons that were at the graduation, that someone had tested positive to notify our students and staff. And just for them to be aware, if you have the following symptoms or you have concerns uh, that you can be tested at the health department or any of your local provider just for a preventative cost. That's the basic standard that every community business is doing is just letting folks know if you have a positive case, here's what you do. This will be our protocol moving forward. If we open school, and we have a staff person or a student that becomes uh, positive, we'll let people know. Uh, obviously those folks will have to quarantine and be home. We have to move forward. Um, spoke with Mr. West today uh, and we had a conversation. He's got some information going out, as I said, probably as we speak now to notify his folks. Uh, a, a troubling thing that I heard in the conversation, I've talked with the department on four or five other occasions. And other than the very first one, all I got was we're stable, things are good, we're in good shape. This morning's call was completely different. Um, they shared with me in the last 48 hours, we've had 100 positive cases tested in our, in our immediate region. Now, does that mean three counties, four counties? I'm not sure. They shared with me that they have become overwhelmed with their staffing as far as trying to trace and track what's going on. She said that what we're, what we're finding out is people, if we've opened up or being more out in the community, people who are not feeling well or not isolating or they don't know they have symptoms, um, and that we're just not adhering to social distance as we were when our numbers were so well. We kind of got comfortable all trying to get back to normal. But she cautioned us to everyone to at least get that information out and all be uh, on the lookout because what we don't want to do is regress and go back to having everything locked down. So I, I will say that. Uh, right after she and I spoke, I got a, somebody shot me a, a tweet from another district. Dyer County Schools announced today that they are suspending athletic practices until after the dead period, which begins on Friday. Mr. West has canceled all of his athletic practice for the remainder of the week. I think we need to at least have a conversation of what the board wants me to do at our other schools that are having athletics now that we've gotten this information. Um, dead period starts Friday. After Friday, we're down for two weeks. So we're looking at it most three days. Um, I think the, that was the, absolutely the right call at Dresden because some of those persons may have been in attendance at that ceremony. So unfortunately, this is not something that we're not going to deal with again, folks. It just is. And I think that we all have to figure out a way to get through it and, and move forward, uh, knowing that we can do it in a, in a safe way and, and move forward. But that, I will say my contact the health department is the most upbeat person that, yeah, if I'm going to help you, we're going to get this thing going. And today is the first time I've heard her at all, and I would say stressed uh, tone at all. So she said, hopefully we'll kind of get things turned around in a week or two, but we're not, we're not in our best spot um, today locally, to be honest with you. Now, she said, sometimes you see numbers, they, they lag, they're not actually what you, what's happening today. And so uh, I feel I feel confident what she tells me is accurate, and because she shot me straight all along. So I'm just telling you that we we're reporting that we've had this event happen, and just <clears throat> informing people. There's not anything else for us to do. And Dresden has made the decision to stop their athletics the remainder of this week and reassess um, in two weeks after dead period. So I guess my my call to you all I can make that decision, but I want to make the right one. You know, you got, we're trying to, 
and I've been by and driven by our schools. I see our kids in their groups and the coaches doing the right things. Um, and I think we're trying our very best to do that. We just, we need to, we just all need to be on board. What message you want me to give and where do we move forward? Um, I've not been told to shut things down by a health official, but there are some concerns. That's how we roll on. About three days, we're going to get down to two weeks. That's my opinion. We've all, we've all been around each other as of today, this afternoon. I mean, what's, what's three more days? I think our choices are, Doug, and I, when you say that, and I, I've thought about it a lot from last night, but I think our choices are is, is do what Chuck did. And he feels like their situation is different than right. it is. And the other choice, if we roll on, I think at least would be prudent for me to send my principals an email and say, just give your coaches a head up that there's some concern that let's be more careful, more cautious, make sure we're doing what we're supposed to, at least to the dead period. And we don't know, we may be in great situations two weeks, we may be worse off. We don't know. Uh, I think what your contact at the health department is saying is, is more important than anything we do here by adhering to social distancing within our communities. I had one coach call me and was not complaining about what we were doing, but just made a observation that I'm getting ready to log who's coming in, what their temperature is, everything that we're getting ready to do and being asked to do. And when I walk out to let them start coming in, I've got seven people piled in two cars. Right listening to music before they come to practice. My biggest fear is a, is a, a citizen of Wheaton County in this country, someone who tries to adhere to somewhat social distancing, uh, who keeps a mask in his truck if he's asked to wear it, which I think we all are, is the fact that there's gotta be some common sense measures I know what I'm about to say can be taken and misconstrued, and I've, and I've thought about this for a week, so I'm willing to say. At some point in time, the school system has to quit being everybody's moral compass, their health insurance provider, and the one that tells people what to do. And I don't know how, I don't know what that looks like, Mr. Frazier, but just like that coach told me, our, our student athletes and our band members and our Everybody that's involved with student organization ain't going to catch the coronavirus at school. They're going to catch it at Sonic, uh, at McDonald's, spending the night with each other. They're going, they're going to catch it. They're not going to catch it at our – well, I don't say they're not going to catch it. They may catch it at our school. But the probability of that happening is going to be outside the buildings. And at some point in time, we, we, we've been given free will in this country to do things and people will use it. We've also been given the charge as a school system to educate every single child in Wheaton County as we can. And somewhere along the lines, those two ideologies are going to have to mesh together and come together. If parents don't feel comfortable sending their kids to school. I respect that. We have a duty to get those parents and those students the proper, you know, the proper educational material to educate their children. If they don't feel comfortable sending their child to basketball practice or softball practice or whatever. Let it be their choice, and then you know, let it be their choice, and we do everything we can within reason. Uh, I'm not, I'm not saying full bore ahead on sports. That's not the point. But some some point in time, people have to quit. <laughs> some point in time, people have to take respons personal responsibility for what's going on. We're 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 doing everything. Right. We sit here. We're we're sitting here telling, not giving you a, a raise that you deserve, because people can't back and do what they've been asked to do by our local health officers. Our coaches, as you said, are doing what they're supposed to do. I've got a daughter that I drop my me and my wife drop off every morning. Coach Haskins, Coach Rutledge, Coach Neal, football out there shooting these kids with the model thing. They're keeping them separated. They're doing everything they can. I don't, I don't know where it's going to stop. And I talked with uh, Mr. Tucker today. He normally doesn't do band stuff till the last of July. And I said, my advice to you is to plan and move forward. You divide up in your groups and do what you normally do. And if something causes us to have to change, we change. I think all of our plans need to be move forward and have school. 
with kids or sleepovers. I mean, you know, if you why well, people join shooting the basketball. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm, I'm not making light of it. I'm just saying that we were in the softball tournament in East Tennessee this week again. They took the temperature, they just signed a waiver, admonishing them from any kind of uh, blowback if you come down with it. And everybody was underneath the tents and right together, and people all literally the country, you know, about from all corners of the United States. So well, I hate to put Coach West, and that's a yeah. bad situation to be in. Uh, but it's, it's, but no, it's, it's not going. It's not going to be our last one. No, it's not. But, but we have. But we have to recognize that. I mean, it's it's just like whatever what's happening in New York City, what's happening in Nashville. We have. I read a, a great article. There's three things that can control the spread. Of the coronavirus density, density, and density. I mean, and not getting on top of each other and adhering to these social distancing guidelines. What's working, what they have to deal with in New York is different than they have to deal with Nashville and Nashville to Jackson and Jackson to Martin and Martin to Gleason. I mean, just it's different. It's not a one, I don't, I don't, one size fits all day. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I know it's an envious, I just think that. It's not going to be the last one. Well, and, and these are the kinds, as we get into these task force, these are the kinds of decisions we're going to make. I mean, like transporting kids. Mm -hmm. You know, are we, going to, are we going to recommend kids wear a mask because we can't spread them all out and put one to see? Do we ask kids not wear a mask at all? Do we want them to wear them just when they're in the hallways? Oh, not class? I agree, I agree that. I'm sure. Right. 18 year old people. They'll do what you tell them to do. You know, I mean, I don't hate when people are 18 year olds. I'm not saying, yeah, I mean, I'm saying on a school bus or something. I mean, you know, then you start. And we'll, and we'll have some kids that have asthma that we can't mask. <laughs> we have some kids with asthma we won't be able to mask. We know yeah. th those are the kind of questions we're all going to. These kids are that are practicing and running with the mask on and they're sweating in the water more than they're supposed to. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a situation where there's, they're just, and I do, I applaud every one of our, our, our coaches right now and they're, they are working their tails off trying to do the things that you have asked them to do and what the health department's asked them to do. And we, and to be honest with you, we transitioned into phase two yesterday, which is more people and, and then what we get this call last night, so um, is there a recommendation the board get from Mr. Fraser? Course of action? Um, I would suggest you know, our principals get paid to make decisions at the building level. They have to assess what's going on there. My recommendation would be that my recommendation would be that you do as you had suggested. Send out an information to each one of our administrators to, to do what they feel is best for their, their students. And on top of that, make sure that the print, that our administrators are monitoring our coaches, not that they need supervision, yeah. but that they are making sure that, uh, that our, our coaches are doing the best for the, our student athletes. And one of the key things moving forward, we talked about this at our meeting the other day, when, when when we're sick, we need to stay away from each other. That's right. You know, and that if if Johnny shows up football practice and he's running temp, he needs to go home. That's right. And that's been unusual because in the past we said tough it out. Yeah. We all did that, and you play a little. Well, right now, I don't think we need to do that. We need to send them home. Because that's just at some point in time, people want to start to take responsibility for their actions. Yeah, we just don't have to. We can't stay locked down freaking ever. I mean, we don't do it for the flu. This is all this is is a flu that affects people with underlying conditions. Red. And the elderly. Uh, and the elderly. And the elderly. But like I said, like my parents went to that thing this week, and they're both happy. <laughs> but they're willing to take the chance. They came there, they're going to live under a rock. Thanks for bringing it back. Huh? Thanks yeah. for possibly bringing it back. Thanks for exposing it, Doug. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're all, I think I had to be super anyway. I got my own table. I got my own table. Well, now I'll say two things, and you hear something different. Our, our guest at graduation who tested positive, had a very low grade temp, had very little cough, just didn't feel good. And said probably would not have gotten tested if it wouldn't have been for knowing 
this was going around. So you hear some of those different scenarios that everybody's not the same about it. But we have to take this seriously. I think that we have to take it seriously. So there was a superintendent, Middle Tennessee, same thing, Monday morning, graduation Friday night. Felt a little off, went to the doctor to get a B, I think a B12 shot. The superintendent was positive. Yeah, and boom. I mean, that's, we have to take it seriously, but we have to be smart. We have to be measured and we have to, we have to be, the dogs have to be accountable. And I don't like seeing us throw some dough anyway. I need to down three more feet. That's right. That's just <laughs> That's why. That's what I would suggest. I'm oh, good. We need that promotion, though, do I'm. I'm good. I'm, yeah. And I think it, you. You'll have some coaches that we've had some that decided they didn't want to do this. We'll just wait a few more weeks, even before we opened it up, so they can make that decision. Right. Okay. You know what? Principals or the coaches? The principals go triple down the coaches. Is that what you're saying? Um. Uh, no, I'm I'm gonna say that we're we're allowing it at our other communities. But now if a coach doesn't want to do it, yeah. that, um just like the players, we're not gonna mandate them. And and Dresden's situation is different at this right. point. Yeah. We all get that. But, but it, it should only suspended it for this week. Yes, the last Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we got two week dead period. It's really not a big deal, right? Yeah. Kind of what I was looking at it, just three days yeah. all together the day, you know, I'm sure all of the travels. But that information is a press release going out and we're contacting the folks involved. Just to let people know, that's I think that's our duty at least that we It's like Bart Blue, you know, who's a <laughs> Whitney County Schools graduate and athletic trainer in the T-Mark. He's, he's got to have thousands of, of tests at his disposal. disposal. And he said, just because you test negative today doesn't mean you're not gonna have it tomorrow. Right. And it's just gonna be something very difficult to to monitor, and I, I think we all know that. It's just, my gosh, the personal responsibility takes it. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other business? You're taking a motion to adjourn? There's a vote, sir. Most of the reason. No escape. So moved. So moved. <laughs> Josh, you want to make the second? I see Josh. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor, say aye. Uh, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you.